we are now doing is we are looking at uh, how to estimate this read bump. Uh, so we do, first we just make this uh, we we just make the structure of the bit cell where we have uh, M1 and M2, the pass gate and the pull down devices. The pass gate and the pull down devices. Uh, wait. the pass gate and the pull down devices. And we say that the pass gate is in saturation region of operation. So we say the equation for, we just look at the first order equation over here in this particular analysis as of now. And we say, okay, that is the equation one by one, one by two mu n c, c ox w by l of m1 into vds. So vds over here would be vwl minus vx minus vt okay the whole square so that is the current that you will get from the pass gate that the pass gate is sinking the current that the pull down is sinking is, from, is in the linear region so we use the equation as uh, mu mu c ox w by l and we go to vra vra minus vss which is vgs minus vt for the pull down into VDS for the pull down minus uh, VDS square by two. So this is the equation that we use for the current through M2. Now by Kirchhoff's law, we understand that the current from IDS from M1 is equal to IDS from M2. By equating them, we get this. So what, we, what I've done in between is I have simply uh, uh, put CR, uh, I have introduced a variable called cell ratio, which is uh, W by L of the pull down divided by the W by L of the pass gate hmm, over here. So when I equate the current from the pull down to the uh, current from the pass gate, I get a quadratic equation. Now, since I'm not using these uh, second, uh, second order effects, I'm getting a quadratic equation. As we just discussed, you go to more uh, more accurate modeling and you can go to uh, cubic equations and you can also go to fourth order and fifth order equations, and depending on which all effects you want to consider in your analysis. So since we have a quadratic equation, we simply look at what is the A of this quadratic equation, what is the B, what is the C, and we estimate the solution as minus B plus minus B square minus 4AC by 2A. So given this, we arrive at uh, the solution for Vx, which is in this kind of a quadratic form. Are you able to see this? This looks complex, but you will see that uh, when you just go and solve it, it gets solved. Huh? And uh, looks cumbersome, but not really a big problem there. Okay. So, uh, I think those of you who have already solved it, have already done that. Those who are those have not done it, you anyway need to do it. And it's better that you do it. And then we discuss more about uh, if you have any questions in the office hours later. Uh, let us look at what this means in terms of a memory cell. Huh? So how many of you, I'm just curious to understand, how many of you, those who derived these equations, went ahead and saw the impact of changing different voltages, changing different threshold voltages, changing different uh, uh, variables uh, to, uh, to see what is the impact on Vx. How many of you were able to do that or did you do that? You can put a plus five in the chat window if, you, if any one of you did that. No one did it. Okay, so let's let's look at uh, yeah, good rather. So at least you did it intuitively. Uh, what what we can also do is we can just write this equation as mat in MATLAB and and 
run experiments you can run as many experiments and you will get interesting results so let me take you through a small journey of of the impact of different things on uh, on zx value there so let us look at the impact of cell ratio first uh, what we are assuming over here is in this first order set of equations that vth of all the devices is 300 millivolts that v ra is equal to v word line is equal to v bit line which is 1 volt that vd sat is equal to 150 millivolts that's the standard you know 6 kt by q is what is considered to be vd sat regularly and that we keep a cell ratio of 1.5 so when we do that we notice that vx or v bump comes to be 82 millivolts now if i change the cell ratio to 1 v bump rises to 119 millivolts so if v bump rises what happens what 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 fom degrades stability immediately degrades. Degrades. snm degrades. immediately snm degrades because now you have lesser noise margin there okay now we say we went to a still bigger cell ratio and you see v bump reduced so significantly so that is why but you know when you go to a cell ratio of 3 you also increase the area too much and uh, not really desirable so we keep a cell ratio between uh, 1 to 1.5 um, and 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 in very high current cells or where we really want low voltage of operation we can go up to 1.75 typically 1.75 is rather cell ratio is avoided in a memory cell otherwise it has a much much larger area impact hmm? you would rather increase the memory cell current and increase the pass gate a little more huh? so what is the impact of mismatch so in the previous case we had assumed that uh, vts were all equal now we want to see what what how what happens if the vt of different devices changes we've kept the other things as constant we are using cell ratio is equal to 1.5 in the first case we know that when all the vt of all the devices was 300 millivolts v bump was 82 millivolts now let us say that the pass gate pass gate is manufactured fast pass gate has lower vt and we also say that the sigma the variation of vt the sigma of that is 30 millivolts so three sigma passed a faster pass gate means the vt of the pass gate would be how many millivolts the 210 210 so when we kept the pass gate vt at 210 millivolts we saw that the bump increased to 95 millivolts so this is almost so not exactly the same or at least the same trend as you did degrade the cell ratio you made the pass gate fast so the cell ratio in a way effectively reduced and v bump increased hmm? if simultaneously the pull down was towards slow so what will be the vt of pull down then again 3 sigma slow pull down 390 390 in that case, the V bump went to 109 millivolts. Hmm? And if you say, so if you have these two variables, you know, pass gate VT and pull down VT, and you say that one is three sigma away, the other is three sigma away, then in, in a sense, what you have done is you have created a memory cell, which is uh, something like uh, four point something sigma away, 4.2 sigma away. Uh, three, three. So because uh, in, in probability, if you realize these are independent variables, so they will be orthogonal to each other when we represent them on a graph. And the effective location of my point of my memory cell would be around 4.2 sigma away. Uh, 4.2 sigma away means I'm talking about 10,000 memory cells or something like that order. But in reality, in reality, I would have memory cells which would, uh, or a memory array, or on-chip memory capacity which would be of the order of megabits. Hmm? So when we have huge memory capacity, I need to qualify larger sigma sigma extent. I need to possibly go up till six sigma. To go up till six sigma, I will need to go up to around four point five sigma on these axes. Okay. If I do that, 
if bus gate is 4.5 sigma fast and pull down is 4.5 sigma slow then with a sell ratio of 1.5 i already have a v bump of 126 do you remember what was the v bump and sell ratio was 1 so 119 119 so keeping a sell ratio of 1.5 variations have actually exceeded the impact of uh, keeping a good sell ratio hmm? now if i had kept the sell ratio of 1 we looked at the layout and we saw that in that case the sigma value would reduce so what has happened over here the sigma of the pull down is uh the vt of the pull down is 450 millivolts 450 no uh 35 435 435 hai na and and the uh, vt of the pass gate is sir 165 165 millivolts because my sigma was 30 millivolts there if i use cell ratio to be 1 probably that sigma would reduce to 20 millivolts and these are just hypothetical numbers as of now if it is reduced to 20 millivolts what happens to this this goes to p90 p90 this goes to 210 cell ratio of 1 vt of 290 uh, 300 uh, 210 and 390 you may you may find that v bump is probably the same value or slightly lesser ha huh? at least that on, on silicon we observed that snm was better for cell ratio of 1 simply because mismatch had reduced are you able to see why why uh, mismatch and how mismatch impacts uh, uh, stability of a cell any questions this is for the worst case right uh, if uh, if you reverse like pd fast and pg so it will reduce the one yeah but uh, as a designer what do you want to design do you want to qualify the worst case or you want to be happy about the best case worst case yeah that is why we're talking about the worst case mine hmm? yeah this is the worst case but the worst case has to be qualified na that is why so why i have need to qualify six sigma sir so uh, if you look at the gaussian statistics we will look at the statistics part a little later in the course also but if you look at the gaussian statistics uh, you will see that uh, uh, for getting good yield 99% yield in a in a 16 megabit array you need to qualify around six sigma variations okay so you remember we we talked about what is the coverage you know if we have a, uh if we if we have a gaussian then within one sigma there are this cells are covered they are qualified two sigma uh, a still larger extent is qualified three sigma still larger extent is qualified remember we we discussed this sir so, huh so if i go to six sigma i qualify more cells and you will notice that uh, six sigma means i am able to get a 99% yield on a 16 megabit array how much memory how much cache does your uh, system have does your cell phone have application processor in the cell phone have Do you know have you checked L1 cache or L2 cache on your L, on your application processor? Not check. Just go, go on, uh, go on, uh, go and Google <laughs> the application processor name of your phone, and uh, details will be available there. Hmm? So you will see that typically on chip memory capacity, uh, including L1 caches, L2 caches, and so on, of all the cores and of uh, of the remaining part of the chip. for digital socks it is it is actually very high it could be 64 megabits in the most advanced technologies today 
So six sigma is the bare minimum that you need to qualify for SRAMs. Okay, so I had a thing to ask them. So for example, you're seeing with the mismatch with when we have the cell ratio of one, then by a statistical uh, analysis observation, we can see that the VMOOC might slightly decrease. So, but like as a designer, I only have this cell ratio in my control. So VT mismatch is not in my control. Yeah, you so, can't. Yeah. As a designer, I should be designing a cell ratio of 1.5, right? Because yes. So uh, only when you are working closely with the technology team, which can only happen when you are working with an IDM. Which an, what is an IDM? For example, you're working as a designer in, uh, in a company like ST, who has its own fabs and who can decide what the memory cell is, or Samsung, hmm, or Intel, or TSMC, then you can do that. But if you're working at ARM or if you're working at Synopsys, where you cannot really request an extra, extra model, for uh, for a regular, you know, for a cell ratio of one kind of a memory cell, you cannot re really request a, a, a specific spice card which has reduced variations models inside it. You cannot do this design. And even in IDMs, uh, this this is usually done by the process teams, technology teams themselves. A designer would not get to choose a, a cell ratio of one until the technology teams is convinced that yes, they can manage it, they will not open the possibility for the design team. But you should know. So, so as we are getting the V bump similar to the cell ratio of 1.5 for the cell ratio of one, after the uh, considering the variations. No, with the cell ratio of 1.5, I'm ending up with the same V bump or worse V bump than what I would have got with the cell ratio of one when variations are considered. Yes, so V bump to same hai almost similar hai for hmm. cell ratio 1.5 and cell ratio one. Hmm. Nee, 1.5 with mismatch and one without mismatch yet. Okay. Achha, okay, 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 sir. Understood. With the cell ratio of one, if you put mismatch, you will see there is a, there is a loss of bump there also. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So what is the impact of supply voltage? Again, now we say, okay, we are going to that worst case setting that this mismatch is already built in. That cell ratio is 1.5, VD sat is this. Uh, VRA is equal to V bit line is equal to V word line is equal to one volt. So we found that the bump was 126. If I increase the voltage, the pump reduces a bit. If I reduce the voltage, the bump increases. So as I go to lower supply voltages, my static noise margin degrades very significantly. Okay. Sir, sir in this slide, we are basically looking at the impact of VARR, right? Because, uh, yeah, as of now, we have kept same voltage on the word line, the bit line and the array. So, but like if we reduce the VARR, for example, the supply of the positive, we will see that the bump will increase. But if we also reduce, but, but independently, say, suppose we reduce bit line, then that has health of stability. So, I mean, like, yeah. because. So let us look at that. Let us look at word line and then we will also look at bit line. So what happens when word line voltage is changed? What happens then? Let us look at that 0.7 case. Now, everything was at 0.7, my V bump was 162. I reduced word line voltage, my V bump went to 118. Hmm? I reduced it further, V bump went further lower. So what do we mean by this? That word line under drive is a read assist scheme. Voiline under drive will help us to improve stability of the cell. But what is the impact? What is the penalty of Voiline under drive? Quickly. It's the right. Cell current. Uh, yes, the cell current goes for a toss. Now the pass gate does not have sufficient strength to sink any current. My cell current actually goes for a toss. My memory speed goes for a toss. Hmm? You're able to see this? 
so one thing i need to ask that while reading we are looking at two kind of uh, things one is the cell current and one is stability so when i say the read system so i would be basically targeting the stability thing so we yes. not necessarily raghav so you may use two assist schemes in parallel one assist schemes recovers stability the other recovers cell current So, but if you go on my Google Scholar page, you will see one of my papers where we actually use multiple read assist schemes in parallel to do exactly this. Okay. Okay. I mean, sir, if 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 if, 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 if for example, I am able to do something and improve any of the parameters, such as the current or the stability, I would call it as a read assist. Yeah. Okay. It is assisting. Otherwise, I would have to use larger devices, na? So anything that I am using to Avoid increasing area by electrically modifying stuff. That is assist scheme. Okay. Sir. Okay. Because uh, to me it seems to be contradictory because both can achieve, but I will look into that. Okay. Now, what is the impact of VSS? So, abhi tak we were always considering that it was ground. Now, let us say VSS is negative. So, you will see bump goes lower. If VSS is a uh, positive the mump would go still higher so negative vss could also be an assist scheme that you could use in memory arrays for improving stability what happens when you uh, when you have uh, uh, a negative vss what happens to the read current there increase the read current would also increase see essentially all that you are saying is if v bump is reducing then the vds across the pass gate has increased So read current would improve, huh? Yes, sir. So can you please repeat the statement? So if I have reduced this uh, V bump, reduce the level of V X, what happens to the read current? What happens to the uh, voltage across the volt drain uh, and source of the pass gate? It's so increasing. the difference it increases yeah and it increases what happens to the vds that also increases ha huh? so we see an improvement in read current okay so sir uh, i have a question yes. in that yes uh so can you go back to the previous slide for yes. vss Mm -hmm. So when I was doing this, I I coded the equations in Python and then I was entering the values. So for for like minus zero point even zero one VSS, I was getting a very negative value. So sir, if my value is essentially let's say for V bump, V bump I'm getting in the order of zero point zero zero seven something, and then for having a negative VS, I get minus zero point five. So in magnitude so something sense, has gone wrong in your equation in your model yeah maybe because of certain constants or something yeah. but but i just want some sort of an intuition like having a negative value which is really high in magnitude does that really help us like do we say that we have actually managed to reduce vx to a better stable point if we are getting a negative value which has a higher magnitude than a positive value uh yeah see so it is look at it like this If it was minus twenty millivolts, minus fifty millivolts, minus seventy millivolts at the VX, hmm. now to be able to cause a flip, you will have to bring in more noise, na? No? Right. So that that helps. The problem is something else here. When we go to these negative voltage levels, uh, then while over here I am doing the analysis at point seven, suppose I have. Oh, so, I have to generate this negative voltage at point seven volts. How would I generate that? I would do some charge coupling. I would put in some capacitors. I would toggle those capacitors in a particular way so that. So we will look into this detail later also. We will we will generate some negative voltage on the on the on the fly. Okay. Uh, as I go to higher voltage, let us say one dot zero volts. If at point seven volts, I generated minus point two volts. At one dot zero volts, what is the kind of voltage I would generate through those same couplings? Point three volts, fifty percent higher. Point seven se one pe gaye. So usi ratio me the negative voltage would also increase. So now, what is the voltage across the different devices? The voltage is one dot zero, which is on the gate, let us say, 
and minus 0.3, which is on the source or drain. So across the gate oxide, the voltage now is 1.3 volts. As you increase the voltage across the gate oxide, the reliability of the device starts to degrade. That is what actually limits what kind of negative voltages we can use inside a memory. Sir, VSS is on the source of the pull down, right? Yeah. So, so having, um, I mean, what I meant to ask is that V bump is equal to 37 millivolts and V bump is equal to minus 55 millivolts, which is the better case out of these two for stability. So that I already answered. Minus 55 is better. Uh, Hmm. So e even though it it in a sense that we are having a more noisy voltage at VX point because magnitude wise still 55 millivolts is away from zero. So are we just comparing which is big, like what is the voltage drop yeah. across the... Bus? Why did you use the term noisy so much? So because I'm, thinking thinking noisy? That I'm considering that VX should be as close to zero as possible and not that as... That is your assumption. As... That yeah. is a wrong assumption. Based on... Okay. That is a wrong assumption. It is just, just for ease that we say that this particular voltage is zero volts. Do you realize the entire chip, for the entire chip, I may keep VSS at 12 volts hmm. and uh, VDD at uh, 13.2 volts and my, so my right. circuit will yeah. work perfectly fine. Yes. So all this is, is, uh, this, is uh, this is just about using something as a reference voltage. Okay, sir. Got it. You know, VSS is just about a reference voltage. When you you just for your ease of calculations, you want to keep that reference or you want to call that reference voltage as zero. Okay, Are you sir. able to see this? Yes, sir. But otherwise, the entire chip is floating somewhere. We don't even know. We are doing all this analysis with the reference of VSS. Now, what we said is, I will take it lower than that reference. I can do that. Hana? Yes, sir. Yes. That is what it is. Sir? Yes, Raghav? Sir, uh, in this impact of VSS level, I'm getting a little confused. I'm seeing two different things happening. One is that V bump is decreasing. So I can say that uh, it is kind of a stability kind of point of view. It is good also. But as you said that the VD is also increasing. So my cell current is also increasing. So both my uh, merit figure of merit kind of they are increasing in this way. I'll improve with this PDSS name, I can say that. Yes. Okay. Now the question is, uh, what is the capacitance of VSS? Can you really take it to minus two volts? What kind of power consumption will be, what will be the power consumption just to take it to minus 0.2 volts? The capacitance I can give with the point. Capacitance, I mean. See. You are not keeping it at minus 0.2 volts always. Now, only during read cycles, you will take it to minus 0.2 volts. The VSS. Sir. Yeah, VSS. Yes. So there is some charging or discharging that you need to do. Okay. That is power consumption. Okay. So, so you need to estimate what is the kind of power consumption or what is the kind of overhead that you are paying for any assist scheme. Okay. So, yes, if you have a, a very controlled VSS, a very small capacitance on the VSS, very small in terms of not fentofarad, but yeah, not a huge capacitance on VSS, then you can do this. It may be power efficient. If not, then taking the entire memory array in every read cycle to minus 0.2 volts, it's a huge power consumption. So, you may not be able to use the technique. Okay. Sir, uh why can't we put it to minus point to all the time? Actually? Just let me finish. Just let me finish. Yes. So you will notice that in, in academic literature, you will see many people are proposing such funny schemes without really talking about how to implement VSS in a manner that the voltage of uh, uh, or the capacitance of VSS is low enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Faisal was asking, why can't we keep uh, VSS at minus 0.2 volts always? So then that is almost as good as operating the memory at 0.9 volts. Then why generate a negative voltage in the first place? Just use 0.9 volts. If VSS was always minus 0.2, then it is as good as operating at 0.9 volts. No? 
that is the kind of power consumption you are switching every capacitance between minus 0.2 and 0.7 so why then call this reference as minus 0.2 so call the reference as zero and call the vdd as 0.9 that is the power consumption you are talking about are you able to see this sir sir uh, actually i didn't understand sir exactly so why do you want to go to lower supply voltages let's start with this basic question lower supply to reduce leakage sir actually so Only in this uh, in this I'm we are going read right lower... here i am doing read and write here i am worried about leakage when i am doing read and write no sir so... over here the bump voltage gets re... is getting reduced oh so you think i will reduce voltage of operation for reducing bump voltage in a memory cell power so to increase vds Hmm? So I want to so make the pull down. Why stronger. do we why do we do voltage scaling? You remember we talked about dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. Why do we do that? The so power power efficiency because I want to modulate my depending on frequency operation. I want yeah. to see the load. We saw that when the load is not very high, let me not consume too much power. Let me operate slower and let me go to a lower voltage. So the entire attempt of going to lower voltage was to reduce power consumption. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. If yes, power sir. is not reducing, then what's the point in going to lower voltage? Sir, now you are telling me. Now you are telling me that always keep VSS at minus point two. So what is the voltage swing that you are having on all the capacitors now? Instead of zero to point nine, they are swinging between minus point two to point seven. Is the power consumption reducing? No, sir. No, sir. No. Then why? This is not even a scheme, then, na? Yes, sir. You only do this in the read cycle, only in that limited part where you are doing read operation. Everywhere else, everything is point seven. Only where you are doing read operation, there you have done this. a uh, voltage boost or uh, negative vss and you recover the performance you recover the functionality everywhere else it is lower power that is when you will gain some benefit that is where it is called as an assist scheme okay yes sir thank you yeah so now if we add mismatch or look at mismatch in the presence of uh, uh you know uh, high vt devices let us say a memory cell we want to use a high vt memory cell so that leakage is lower then you will see the bump would increase further hmm memory arrays if you remember even the example that we have done in the dvd course memory arrays are usually designed in with high vt devices so when we use a high vt device we see bump increases further okay Uh, in this, I would be needing more system with the VT kind of high VT devices. Yeah. So high VT devices, you you see that the effect of mismatch increases still further. The impact of mismatch is still higher. Okay. So 